Hello, Great River families. Here's your two minute synopsis of the slideshow and information given uh, since December 16th about elementary school models. Um, first off, our immediate actions as a school is that one, we'll be following your distance learning model at least through February 24th for ele elementary programming. Secondly, uh, we're committed to a six week announcement timeline for any big shifts from the distance learning we're doing to in person modeling. Uh, now, that means that you will learn six weeks beforehand if there's a big change happening to your student schedule. Um, however, also, we're going to be using the new guidance released by the state of Minnesota um, to assess our current criteria. So that speedometer and that chart that is on our GreatRiverSchool.org return website, uh, we're going to be using the new guidance to figure out how, uh, when, and if a move to in-person makes sense. And um, we're really committed to that. Uh, we know that we owe it to our Montessori model, to our students and families, to work as hard as we can to make sure that if there's a safe way to do in-person authentic Montessori learning that we're doing that. And then last, uh, the most immediate change is that we're working right now to expand our lower elementary student resource center, which is the insight welcoming of students on campus using these new health guidelines, which we are confident keeps both adults and students uh, mitigated and safe from virus uh, passing from people. Uh, and that we're doing that as soon as we can staff that model. And so there are some dates in this newsletter about that. Um, but specifically, uh, I just want to remind folks that um, there's a lot of things that have happened this last six months. You can read about it more uh, if you go to the slideshow that's linked below. Um, and that we're using uh, our core values as a school to set a foundation for making these decisions. Um, and our core values are in a school are meeting the needs of all learners, um, especially and particularly when those needs are divergent. And that uh, equity and justice and thinking about how inclusion happens is at the foundation of those. So in the areas of health and safety, relationships, uh, learning success for our students, and then meeting state guidelines, we can't trade success in any one of those areas for success in another. Um, so we had committed to assessing school models uh, at regular intervals throughout the year. Um, the December announcement from the state of Minnesota uh, made that go just a little bit faster than we had originally planned. However, um, we, we want to hear from you. And so when we take surveys, one of the reasons that we're taking the surveys is so we can make sure every voice is included. And there are always these invitations to email, call us, um, to participate in listening sessions and working groups, um, to show up to office hours, to board committees and board meetings. And so um, hearing from our community is really uh, important in order to make these decisions that we've made. Um, so as much as possible, we want to stay the course for predictability. And we also really want to work for everyone who is comfortable coming on site to come. So what's that going to look like? It's going to look like us meeting certain benchmarks before we're ready for in-person learning. Now, with new safety guidelines, we're moving from where the state was saying to use regional data, so how many cases per 10,000 people, to local data, meaning we're testing staff, we're implementing uh, tested and more rigorous staff safety measures of masks and face shields. Uh, then we are also um, looking at how to prepare the learning environment um, after, after we've done that. Uh, so after our safety and preparedness guidelines are met, the learning environment is prepared to meet those safety guidelines. Then we're looking at our staffing to make sure we can implement the models that we know work uh, and staff those models on site. And then we're looking at preparing the learning environment for learning. So after safety is taken care of and staffing, then is the, are the classrooms ready, uh, the materials ready? Do we have them laid out and organized in such a way that they're accessible? And then fourth uh, would be what's the impact on students as we move into those models? Um, so when those four benchmarks would be addressed is when we're ready to do in-person learning. And what I said earlier this week, and what I'll say again, is that we're committing to set those benchmarks before we can really tell you exactly what's going to start about in-person learning. However, the news today is that we're going to set those benchmarks by February 1st. Now, that doesn't mean we won't be expanding the SRC first. In fact, we're taking new SRC students back into the SRC uh, starting next week and then implementing a phased return up until February 1st. Uh, any students in the lower elementary who want to come to the SRC may come. Now, upper elementary and adolescent uh, is still um, a different category. And so we're going to update our safety protocols, make sure staffing plans are consistent and executable. We're going to uh, have our learning environment prepared and, and then make sure st student family impact is taken into account. Um, 
Upper elementary and adolescent students are in a different age group, and the health data that we have to reference shows that the, the virus behaves differently with that age group. So at this point, we're just talking about the expansion for lower elementary. Uh, I wanted to real quick just close by running through the survey results. Um, uh, over the past several weeks, we've now gathered 100% contact rate with all staff and all families. 97% of all families have responded, which is an almost incredulous uh, result. Um, and specifically what we see though is that about half of our families, yes, are ready to send their students in person, half are not ready to send their students in person. And then just to give you an, a, a clearer picture of that, of the half that want to send their students in person, there's even some reticence there though about um, how often and, and what it might look like and if we still have to quarantine uh, if we are exposed to the virus and all those things hold. And so when we look at these, we split them between upper and lower elementary, we do see a little bit more reticence among upper L families, and a little bit more eagerness to go in person among lower L families. Um, and so again, the first phase here is that we're gonna expand the Student Resource Center for Lower L. Uh, then we're gonna focus in a second phase on how to move safely into in-person learning through those benchmarks. And that no matter what, we're gonna continue to follow the guidelines um, from the Department of Education and Health. You can see a different video to cover some frequently asked questions, and you can also find all the questions answered in writing. Thanks so much.